Thank you, Dr. Jogarov. Honorable President Sapro, Chief Justice Bhutan, Justice Sonam Toke, Honorable Justice Umesh Banerjee, President Sakhlo, India Chapter and Vice President of, of Sakhlo, Justice Tishrek Bangchuk, Judge Supreme Court of Bhutan, President of Sakhlo, Bhutan and Vice President of uh, Sakhlo, Justice Kalyan Shreshtra, Judge Supreme Court of Nepal, President of Sakhlo, Nepal and Vice President of Sakhlo, some time back I saw Justice Supreti as well. I don't know if he's still there. He's right here. Justice, <laughs> Justice Supreti. Yeah, he's here. Uh, Judge Supreme Court of Nepal and he's been closely associated with Sakhlo. He was also Secretary General of Sakhlo at one point in time. Justice <coughs> Shrini Tilakwardhane, uh, Judge Supreme Court of Sri Lanka. I think I have named all the judges. I think so. <laughs> if I have not, my apologies. My Sakhlo colleagues, EXCO member Sapna Prathanwala, Purun Man Shakya, uh, Professor Ambar Pant, Lakshmi Upreti, and Belton Mangmo. Belton, where are you? And Dr. Marilyn from UNAIDS, Asela from uh, IGLO. <laughs> Consultants, uh, Jogar Rao, Aisha Mago, and how can I forget Lonely Burkeshine? <laughs> the project officer of ITLO, uh, the, the focal point, and the nodal officer, the servant. She definitely deserves a good round of applause from all of us. <laughs> We were all emailing, but she was the one who was at the helm of all the affairs. Thanks, Naomi. Thanks for your support. <laughs> all those present here are eminent in their respective fields. And it's practically impossible to name each one of you. So I'll beg your pardon and I'll take the liberty of referring to you as honorable dignitaries, guests learned delegates, speakers, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure and happiness to welcome all of you to this South Asia Roundtable Dialogue on HIV and Law, which is organized by uh, SARC Law, IDLO, UNAIDS, UNDP, World Bank, OFID, and even TSIF. South Asia has also supported us in some way. Thanks, Joe. <coughs> Joe, are you around? <laughs> Especially, I will extend a very warm welcome to all the visitors who have come from all over South Asia to be part of this event. The objective of this roundtable is to get together the relevant constituents of legal fraternity from South Asia, be it lawyers, judges, law professors, academicians, <coughs> parliamentarians, government officers, and young lawyers, to, to discuss legal and policy matters, issues impacting different facets of HIV. <laughs> I would not like to get into discussing the theme of the event or, or the topics of the event. I think my other co-speakers, Dr. Marilyn and Asila, would do a better job. Because as a lawyer, I don't trust myself because lawyers are in the habit of reading 10,000 page document and still calling it a brief. <laughs> so therefore, let my other colleagues do that honor. Let me quickly introduce you, or rather share with you, two important pieces of information. One about SARC law, what it means, and second, journey to this event, the history behind this event. <coughs> SARC law is, is a regional epics body of SARC. It was established in 1991. And since then, it has not looked backwards. It has forged ahead with 
various projects, programs, initiatives and activities which have done definitely good to the South Asian region. One of the initiatives was getting the, the Chief Justices belonging to all the South nations under one banner, on one platform. In fact, initially when South Law started, we, we wanted to involve parliamentarians in a big way, thinking that they would help us in legislating newer laws, which were in need of the hour, which were in need of the society. But we realized that parliamentarians some, somewhere had their limitations because of ideology of the political parties they represented, the constituency they came from, voters, expectations, so on and so forth. So down the line we decided to involve judiciary, judges, honorable judges, effectively in the South Law movement. And believe me, they did a great job. They used to come for our events, they used to listen to the deliberations, discussions, and, and all those good points used to get reflected in their judgments. So we embraced the judges. And today I can share with you with a tremendous amount of pride that we are blessed to have Chief Justice of Bhutan as our president. There are many people who have <coughs> great vision and he definitely is a great visionary. He also has great vision. But apart from vision, he has the capacity and drive to translate, transform vision into reality. And I can safely, and, and, and uh, sir, please excuse me if I would be offending you in, in, in any way, but I, I'm saying it from my heart that for me, you are James Bond of the South Asian tradition. SAKLO has three major objectives. One is dilution of the boundaries of the legal fraternity in the region. Second being making law as an instrument of social economic change for development. And third being encouraging cooperation amongst various sections of the society. Finally, let me share with you the last piece of information that is the journey to this event. Last year, SAC Secretariat connected SAC Law with Human Aids. Human Aids was looking for a partner. I happened to be in Bangkok in October last year. And precisely on 6th of October, I got to meet uh, a person called Geeta Sethi, who was then the representative of Human Aids in Bangkok, the regional headquarter of Human Aids is based there. So we met, we met informally on 6th of October and she told me that you know, she would be accompanied with uh, a lady called Naomi Murkeshain who who's also who also comes from a legal background and she is the project officer of IDLO. And we met and instantly we, three of us, we decided that we have to take forward our association to a meaningful level. And we did, actually. Me being lawyer, I insisted that Nothing should be left to the verbal arrangement. We should definitely enter into some documented agreement so that the duties, responsibilities, and obligations of each of the parties are clearly defined. So on 28th of March this year, SAPLO signed an MOU with UNH. And it, it was a formal event. The document was signed on behalf of UNH by Regional Director Steve Cross. And Steve asked me that well, you are a corporate commercial lawyer. What brings you to this platform of, of uh, you know, social cause, HIV, and all that? I told him about an incident where a client called the law firm and inquired about his lawyer. The telephone operator picked up the phone and, and he said, he asked, can I speak with my lawyer, Mr. So-and-so? And she said that, I regret to inform you that He's no more. He died a week back. He hung the phone. Next day he again called and he said, can I speak with my lawyer, Mr. Spencer? She could identify the voice and she said, look, you called yesterday as well and I told you that 
Lord is no more. He died, but he's back. He again hung the phone. And third day he again called. This time obviously telephone operator was a bit annoyed and she said that what, 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 are, what are you fooling around with? I told you that the Lord is no more. Why are you calling me again and again? So he said that I feel happy when you tell me the lawyer is dead. <laughs> I love hearing that. That the lawyer is no more. So I told Steve Cross of UNH that I don't want to die with that kind of an impression. <laughs> and and we, we, all, all the lawyers, you know, we, we, we need to realize that we get so much from the society. And, and it's high time that we, we start giving back something uh, uh, back to the society. And eventually, you know, we also signed MOU with ITLO. ITLO in fact, just an hour back, we, I signed, uh, I mean, on behalf of SARC Law, MOU with ITLO. ITLO, uh, the document was signed by the, by the acting director general sometime back, and the original contract was sent here, which we, we signed today. And, and I would definitely like to, I mean, this, this event is attributable to that MOU as well, uh, for sure. And there is one more document which we have uh, signed with UNDP, which is slightly confidential, so I will not be able to divulge much details uh, about. So, in effect, SAPLO has signed three very relevant documents pertaining to this very subject, what we are going to discuss in the next two days. I will close my address uh, by wishing you all the best. Present stay to all the visitors uh, who are visiting Kathmandu, and, and uh, definitely best of the proceedings, deliberations, for all the participants for the next two days. God bless all of you and God bless the event. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hemant Batra, for a very insightful and informative welcome address. May I now request Dr. Marlin Boromio, UNH's country coordinator, NEPA, to address the gathering. Justice Resta and other distinguished um, justices, the President of SARC Law, Mr. Herman, our lawyer, um, Mr. Asela, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good, good evening and namaste. I bring with me the warm greetings and solidarity of the Joint United Nations Program on HIV AIDS, shortly called UNAIDS. When I say UNAIDS, I mean the 10 co-sponsors and UNAIDS Secretariat. So, all in all, we are 11 entities when we refer to UNAIDS. Let me congratulate the organizer of this very important event, the, the Roundtable um, Dialogue, SARCLO, IDLO, UNDP, World Bank, um, DFID, I've seen Matt around, um, the Technical Support Facility for South Asia, and of course, UNAIDS. I warmly welcome everyone, especially those who are coming here for the first time. You, I think you come at the tail end of autumn and when, when winter is about to start. So try to enjoy the very pleasant weather in Kathmandu, but also the warm hospitality of the Nepali people. Now this South Asia 